Um, I am going to be going over prom hairstyle today, which is really exciting because, as we know, prom is in the air and the hair. So today we're going to be going over how to do this style here, like this really cute braided bun kind of moment. Really easy and quick way to make you some money behind the chair. And I'm also going to be showcasing how to create, um, I believe, I've been calling this the dragon braid. So I'm going to show you guys the dragon braid and the versatility of the dragon braid. See, you know, here we have more of like a French, uh, French braid with a dragon braid going on. And here we've got, you know, just more curls on the side and more in the front. So make sure you check in. I'm going to show the, the I'm going to showcase um, the braided bun first, and then I will be showcasing the dragon braid second. And we'll be doing this braided bun here on my Manny Quinn here, and then we'll be doing the dragon braid on my fun girl here. So stay tuned with me, guys. And if you guys that are just tuning in, could let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I love to get to know you guys. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining. So one thing that I always like to do is I make sure that I instruct my client. It, you know, it's important what we use behind the chair, but it's also important what they are using at home. So I love to prep or pre-blow dry or instruct my client to pre-blow dry using the zero weight gel to give me a lightweight control and body and then also the root effects to give me volume at the base. So I've prepped her with that, and I've also prepped her with our new Rapid Bond Reconstructor and Bond Smoothing Styler to protect the bonds and also give smoothness, shine, and protect from the atmospheric humidity that we know causes surface expansion that we don't want. So make sure you guys know that. And then I always start with all of my updos, all my formal styles with dry shampoo. The reason why I like to do this is, you know, your client may or may not, they may not listen to you. You know, they, client, you know how clients can be. So they may not listen to you. They may come in with oily hair. And so I like to make sure that I prevent any excess oiliness and give volume when working with hair and working with braids. So love that. And Carlton, Georgia, thank you for joining. Appreciate that. So we're going to start out. Can everyone see? Let me make sure you guys can see. So we're going to actually start out by doing a, um, a French. Excuse me. Let me grab my comb. We're going to do a French, and then we're going to move it into a fishtail. Can everyone see what I'm doing? Type in the comments, yes, if you can see what I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you know, just like I would with any French, I'm going to take and start my three strand. And then here's where I'll start to incorporate in the sections. And I also, I forgot to talk about my sections. I'll show you once I've done this one, the rest of the sectioning we'll be doing today because that's super important because it makes it really easy for you guys and gives you guys like a roadmap of what to do when you don't have, you know, me here telling you, you know, how to do this. So. I love to give everybody a roadmap and it sparks creativity. And I think it is important to know, you know, then you don't have to worry about, you know, well, how do I do this? You can look at something, you can look at someone's piece of work and know exactly how to do it. So I've started off with a French braid and then I'm gonna move into a fishtail. And the way you do a fishtail, it's much like a traditional braid. If you can do a traditional braid, you can do a fishtail. What you're going to do is you're essentially going to only take half of each section and wrap it in on itself. Can everyone see that? Perfect. Thank you, honey, for that. I appreciate it so much. So again, we're going to finish our fishtail here, and then I'm going to do something here in a minute called pancaking, or what I call pancaking. And it is basically to um, expand out the braid and give fullness. So I love pancaking. I just think it's a cool name. Sounds better than, you know, expanding. I'm like, let's pancake your braid. That sounds fancy. So love that. And then I'm going to take just a clear elastic here to secure my work. And for anybody else that has just tuned in, if you guys could let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Like I said, I'm coming to you from the beautiful North Carolina, or as I call it, North Kakalaki. So I'd love to get to know where you guys are all from. So I'm going to actually take our true clean um, shampoo 
And I'm actually going to use it as like a puff powder. I'm not sure everyone can see that. So I'm going to go in and add that. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me this ability. And you see, I may have put just a smidge too much. It's going to give me the ability to pancake out this braid. And what that's going to do is, as you see, create a nice, beautiful expansion and fullness that, you know, this mannequin, she has quite a bit of hair, but not all of our clients have a lot of hair. So I think it's great to kind of give that expansion. And then you can kind of see this is exactly what I've done here with this model here as well. So just wanted to show you guys that. And for my sectioning, guys, what I have done, essentially I've started in the middle. And if your client parted to the side, you would just switch it and part, you know, at, incorporate that into the, from the side. I did a section here right below, essentially right above her eyebrow, kind of almost at parietal ridge here. And then I've taken two sections in the back and we're going to be braiding each of them. But I just wanted to make sure you guys knew my sectioning as well. So now I'm going to be switching over, parting my reach here, parting over to this side, taking my section down. I'm going to be taking again my dry shampoo to ensure that I give max volume and it also just sets me up for success. And of course has advanced thermal protection too, if you are going to use an iron with this style. You could easily, too, something that would be cute is if you wanted to leave, you know, a piece or two out to kind of give a little whimsical moment, you could do that as well. So, and I'm also going to be going through, too, here in a few minutes, my favorite products to use and my favorite tools to use and why I like to use them when working with formal styling. Can everyone see this? Okay, so we're going to do, just like we did last time, we're going to incorporate our French, adding in our section. And this is another important reason why it's important to, um, excuse me, part, uh, to uh, make sure you have clean partings and you section your uh, client off like how I showed you, because it makes it really easy to keep your sections nice and clean and when working with their hair, and it makes just the whole process a lot easier when braiding. So we're going to do a French. Can everyone see that? Pardon my reach, guys. Let me know again in the comments if you can see that. And then once we get to here, so see we have, can everyone see that? We don't have any more hair to connect here. Once we've added in that piece, we don't have any more hair to connect. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch and move to a fishtail just to give some more interest. You know, we could do a regular three strand braid, but anybody that knows me knows I love to be extra. So I'm gonna incorporate and do a fishtail braid. And for anyone tuning in that doesn't know how to do a fishtail braid, essentially you just take half of the section that you would take for a regular braid and just twist it in like a normal braid. Can everyone see that? It's super, you know, honestly, when I saw a fishtail, I was like, how do you do this? And everyone was like, oh, it's like five sections. I'm like, let's make this easier. That's a lot, you know, that's kind of confusing to keep everybody, you know, up with five sections in your head. So the best way I've found to teach someone is literally just to, you know, take half of your normal braided section that you would, and then we'll pancake it out, like I said, at the end. So love that. You can definitely use dry texture spray instead of dry shampoo Great, that's a great question. So Honey's question was, can you use dry texture spray instead of dry shampoo? You 1000% can, and let me show you dry texture spray here in a second. And you know what, just for, you know, just for sake of uh, showing you guys, I'll actually use dry, dry texture spray on this section. And I'll tell you why I would opt for dry texture spray or um, dry shampoo. Dry texture spray has a control of five. And it's almost like, imagine if dry shampoo and like a five control spray had a love child. That's what dry texture spray is. So dry texture spray uses the same hectorite clay, which what that means is the even on dark hair types, it's not gonna look white or powdery. So I'm gonna take and I spray that on too before. If, you know, if I wanted to do that pre-section, this can also help expand out your braids as well. But it, like I said, it's gonna give you that same kind of dry shampoo effect, give you max fold, fullness and body with a five control where this has, you know, zero control and it's just dry shampoo. So 
that's kind of the reason why I would opt for one or the other. But yes, you could definitely use either or. It just depends on your preference. So thank you for that question, um, Danielle, or honey, excuse me. Uh, and then I'm sorry, let me read this question here. Can you stop? Okay, I answer both of those. Thank you guys for your questions. So now we're going to take our clean shampoo again to create even more of a pancake and expand out that section. Hello, Candy. Thank you for joining. I love using this this way. So it's kind of like, you know, it's obviously can be used as a, um, a clean, you know, 27, uh, uh, free of 27 uh, harmful ingredients shampoo, but I actually love to use it for pancaking out my braids. So can everyone see that? I love, I love, love, love using True this way. It's really great for that. It gives me really great texture and expansion and pancaking, as I'm calling it, to my braid here. So now we have our two braids. Can everyone see that? So then now we're going to be working on these back two sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this clip that I have here, and I love these clips. You can get them, um, you know, different brands have them, but the, the thing I like to use when I'm doing formal, the reason why I like to use these when I'm doing formal styling is this little rubber band here that they have, it makes it to where when you put on the section, you're not going to have a crease. So I really like that when working with updos, you know, so I'm not creasing in my work. So I'm going to create, can everyone see? Pardon my reach here, guys. Let me know if you guys can see or if I need to move her around differently. So I'm going to do another French braid. Start out with a French. And then I'm going to move into a fishtail again. And this time, you see, I'm taking only from this half of the section. Yes, we can see. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, and I see I have a few new people tuning in here. So if you guys could all comment for me and let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I really do love to get to know, um, you know, anybody that watches my class. I'm actually fairly friendly. So I enjoy getting to know my fellow Lonza artists and just my fellow hairdressers. So I think it's so important to have a connection. And, you know, here's the thing. One reason what I love about education is I get to come on here and hang out with my friends on this gorgeous Thursday and talk about all the things I love, which are Lonza and hair. So again, we now we have our, got a little greedy with that section there. Guys, give me one second. Okay, so see we have now, we have our, our French braid, and then we're going to move into our fishtail. North Carolina and Texas in the house. Yes, baby. The South is in the house. Love it. I appreciate you guys tuning in for me on this Thursday. So again, we're going to be taking our fishtail braid, twisting or turning in each section, taking half of the braid like we would with a traditional three strand, working it in on itself. Taking our elastic. Florida, yes, love it. Yes, I know. It's really important to follow other stylists. I mean, we all get inspiration from each other. And one thing I think is important to note too, you you know, we, we don't all know everything. We can all learn and grow from each other and that's what it's all about. So thank you for that comment, Crystal. I appreciate that very much. So again, we're gonna take our True Clean Shampoo. We're gonna use this as our pancaker or pancaking, whatever you want to call it, to expand out our braid and give some fullness and some movement and some dimension to the braid. See how that pancake sat out? So I, I, like I said, I really love using True in this way and it's also gonna give me some nice texture. See, nice pancaked out braid. And then we're gonna be doing the same thing on this other side. So again, we're gonna be taking our you know, our clip has the band on it so that we don't leave a crease. Moving this up out of the way. Starting with, I'm going to opt to start for my dry shampoo. 
And the reason why I'm using, you know, in this case, using dry shampoo and not using dry texture spray is, you know, I'm not necessarily wanting a hold um, because I am going to be putting this up in a style like this with um, bobby pins. And you see, we've literally done, the, you know, the four braids we're going to do creates this. And this looks, you know, really eloquent and, you know, very complicated and, and beautiful, but it's really not. It basically boils down to four braids. So that is kind of why I've opted to use the dry shampoo today because I don't really need a hole since we are going for that look there with her. And again, make sure you stay on because you are, I'm also going to be showing, showcasing how to do this. Um, this is like called the dragon braid, I believe. And then here's another way to style that as well. So I want to make sure you guys stay on here and check out that coming up soon on this live. Hello, Vonza. Thank you so much for joining. Yes, I know. Prom really is in the hair. I'm excited for all these prom styles too. So we're going to be working with our, three, our French braid here. Pardon my reach. So then we are going to just incorporate, we're going to be doing our French just like we normally would, adding in a section with our three strands. Funny story about me, guys. So I've always loved to like curl hair and I've always loved doing formal styling, but I actually, even at, right out of hair school, I could still never figure out how to braid. Uh, can anyone, does anyone, was anyone on here Type in the comments for me, yes, if you were the same way. I actually could still not do a French braid even after hair school. And I had a lovely client that she just practically begged me. She's like, I want you to be the only one that does my hair for, for my wedding. And I was like, well, how do I say no to that? So I sat on the floor with my mom. Shout out to my mom if she's watching. And I literally braided her hair for like three hours until I got it. So... I, I will be honest, anybody watching this thinking, wow, I wish I could do that. Like, I, honestly, it just it just takes practice, guys. And then it becomes like, you know, muscle memory. So the moral of that story is don't give up on yourself. Just keep going. Sit on the floor with your mom or someone, whoever, that will let you, will put up with you for that long. And, and you know, try some braids out. And, you know, again, I, it's kind of come full circle today. When I got asked to do formal styling, I was like, I never really thought about it, but I was like, I guess I really do love to do formal styling. So I think that's really cool. So I wanted to share that story with you guys. I know I love braiding too. Well, I, see, yes, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Hello, Dulce. I appreciate you watching. Yes, lots of practice. So again, we're going to pancake this out in a second. But yes, I, I definitely think that it just takes practice. There's nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. So just... Basically, my moral of the story is never give up on yourself, guys. We are all beautiful works of art, and we're all works in progress. So again, taking our clear elastic here. Securing that. Taking our true clean shampoo. We're going to utilize that to pancake out our braid. And you could, you know, braid it further if you want. I'm not going to. Um, just because I am going to be placing it up in a bun, I'm just doing the expansion, you know, the expansion now to give some fullness. So now we have our four sections. Can everyone see that? Whoops. I apologize, guys. I'm trying to turn on my eye back. So again, now we're going to go through and create this style with our four braids that we've created. So... I see I've got some new people on here, so if you guys could tell me where you guys are tuning in from, I'd love to get to know you guys. So what we're going to do is, make sure you guys can see here, we're going to take and we're going to essentially wrap these braids around each other. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of my bobby pins here, and I personally like to get as close as I can get colored bobby pin to my client's hair to make sure that it fits. I'm actually going to be taking this and putting this, can everyone see this? I'm actually going to be putting this here on the rubber band. And what I'm also doing is I'm also putting it in between some hair as well. What that is going to do is ensure once I put this up, that it stays put and doesn't jiggle around on me. And you can obviously go back later and pin more if you need to, but it, it creates where, like, like I said, you have those ends 
that's the reason why I let those ends out. It creates a nice solid base for your um, client when, you know, they are, you know, doing their dancing, doing whatever. I always make them kind of do a little dance for me in salon so I can see what, the, what I'm like, shake your head, do a little jig for me. So, and you start to see how we're going to create that beautiful kind of bunnish braid down here on the bottom. Again, we've done four sections, super easy. And you could also do this with just a traditional braid if you wanted. The, the, you know, this is just to give you guys some inspiration. Um, and again, can everyone see that? Can you, can everyone type in the comments for me? Yes, if you can see that. This was like a game changer for me doing this, you know, putting the bobby pin right here in, in with the elastic and with the hair. That way, once I secure it, it doesn't get in my way. So I'm securing my up on itself underneath here. And then I'm going to take an additional bobby pin. Beautiful. Thank you, Dulce. I appreciate it so much. And I'm going to secure that there. And so see, she now has, and I, you know, and I will have her, you know, once I'm done, I will secure that more for her. And then you start putting this braid and this braid here. Can everyone see that? So I'm going to actually go in, take my section, pin this in. I'm actually going to take and kind of tuck these ends in with it to the side there and tuck that hair down in there. And I'm going to take an additional bobby pin for security. Put that right there. And then I will take my last section and pin that over and kind of push it underneath here. So that way you kind of don't see all the log pins. See that elastic there. I'm going to actually re-secure this piece right here. My elastic come off with my bobby pin. Do you guys ever have that happen when you're, you know, doing the style and your bobby pin moves and you're like, really? Really, bobby pin? Or is it just me? I don't know. If you guys could type in the comments yes for me because that happens to me all the time. I'm like, it's just part of the adventure, guys. So then I'm going to take, I'm actually going to push this up underneath here. And then I'm going to take my final bobby pin and push that and tuck that in and under. And then I start looking and seeing where, you know, where do I need to put more bobby pins? Where do I need to secure? And you also could get another really cool idea for this would be to get bobby pins that have those little jewel charms on them. That would look really great. They do have a mind of their own. And, and then you can like kind of create, you know, you can expand this braid out more if you wanted to. But there's one variation of it. And then here is another variation of it. It really just depends on, you know, the way you place it and what you want to do. But I just wanted to give you guys cool inspiration for a quick hairstyle. You know, that was about 20 minutes worth. So not long at all for the full thing. And so now we are going to move into our dragon braid. So let me go show you guys this. So we'll start out right here. And we are going to brush her out. And then we are going to start where we put our dragon braid. So with like this, this model here, I, I'm going to do like with her, I'm going to put it on the side here. So what you do is you basically take your section. I thought this, this braid was so cool when I saw it. I was like, how do you do this? 
And so I, I really wanted to show this because it was a super easy, quick style to learn how to do. So you take wherever you want to part the hair, take your piece here. Can everyone see that? Oh, thank you, Dulce. I appreciate that. Yes, color is my ballywick. And you guys already know, if you know anything about me, I've used Lonza Vibes to create all of these gorgeous colors. This is my favorite color. And also, too, I, I want you guys to know this month, I, I believe it's at Salon Centric. I'm in North Carolina, so we have Salon Centric. If you buy 24 tubes, you get this absolutely gorgeous freeform tote bag, which is great. It has a little Lonza logo on it. Love these for the airport as you know, a, uh, my personal item, love these bags. And again, if you buy 24 of these vibe shades, which help create beautiful shades like this, you get that for free with Salon Centric. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, and one thing too, I also want to talk about really quick are my favorite products when doing something like this. So I'm going to start out with our air pace here. The reason for that, this is going to give me a, a paste feel like from from like a puck but with a spray a spray application the reason why i love that it gives me that tack that i want when doing a style like this without actually getting my hands sticky and it's just a lot easier to work through the hair because it's a spray and then i'm going to take a wide tooth comb too to detangle that out so i'm going to take my comb here i'm going to incorporate this and show you how to get the front to look gorgeous like my lovely rainbow model here make sure you guys can see so we are going to take can everyone see that take our section there i'm going to take a clear elastic secure it on this hair on the kind of the ends of the hair Wherever you, you know, wherever you feel most comfortable with. I find for this kind of uh, dragon braid that the kind of middle-ish is perfect. And then you're going to take, can everyone see this? You're going to take and actually wrap this up underneath here on itself. You're going to take those ends, kind of ribbon those ends together. And create a beautiful kind of twist. Can everyone see that? And you could get more bold with it too if you want. And then it creates like we have here. And you can make it more poofy if you want, but it just creates some interest in the front. Can everyone see? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, section her out really quick. I do apologize, guys. Her, it's, you know, with this kind of style, it is a little bit harder to pre-section. But I'm going to take kind of a, around a halo section at the top. You see leaving all of this hair down. I take my section here that I took in the front. And I'm going to start incorporating in the rest of this hair. And I'm just going to secure this bottom with a clip with a no crease clip. Just to ensure that this hair, I don't accidentally get it in my way. I find that this is the best way to secure it and just make sure that this is a lot easier for you guys or at least for me. Can everyone see this? Make sure you guys can see. And then we're gonna take our hair here, brush it out, make sure you guys can see. And then we are going to take our clip here. Clip, listen at me, our comb, excuse me guys. Take this here, and we're gonna take this hair and wrap it around itself. Can everyone see that? And then we're gonna wrap it there. So then you're gonna take an elastic and secure this, these two sections you've created at the bottom. And then you're going to do the same thing. Take this hair. And like this one, I've done a little looser 
part of my reach. I'm actually going to redo this. I'm going to pancake this out a little bit more for you guys. So I'm going to retake this section here. Sorry guys, I didn't like how that looks. I don't know if anyone else does that, but when I'm doing formal styling, sometimes I'll look at it and I'm like, nope, I don't like that. We're going to redo that. So then I take and I will cross these sections together from the underneath with this. Everyone see that? So what we're doing is we're creating this here. So you're going to create and actually take here from this section, pull on the underneath from there and pull this hair from the underneath. Does that make sense to everyone? I want to make sure I show you guys because it can get confusing. So I wanted to show you guys again, my pre-done model. So you're going to take, twist your hair. Take your elastic, apply back there, and we'll take our section here, create that right there underneath. Can everyone see that? So now we have two sections. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, it does make sense. It's it's super, it looks complicated, but it's super easy. You just have to, you know, look at it. And sometimes you do have to take it down and redo it because you may not like the way it turned out. So then we're gonna take this next section here, put this one underneath, and we're gonna incorporate that previous section in with it. Wrap that around there. Everyone see that? Get our elastic. And then take our final section on the top here. Connecting this from the bottom. Everyone see that? Adding in that section there. Wrapping it around. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Wrapping it around there. And then what I'm actually going to do for this, I'm actually going to take and start twisting to give a little bit more interest. Just to show you guys a different look of how you could do this other than just there. So I'm going to twist, twist and twist. I'm actually going to braid. I apologize, guys. Do you ever change your mind whenever you're doing your mannequin? The the other mannequins I have have actually thicker hair. And I, um, with her, I was like, mm, no, we're going to do this instead. So then I'm going to take that, braid that up out of the way. And I'm going to show you guys how it actually go and on and about curling that hair. So we have our braid now, like we have here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take for you guys and show you guys how I like to curl those sections to give a really quick and easy style. Cause you know, we have our braid here. We've taken and we've, you know, created this. Like I said, this one has more hair. So I do apologize for you guys. The one that I really wanted to do is here. So I have this one, and then I'm going to take and show you guys how I like to create these curls. And also, some of my favorite products to use, um, I've set them kind of all here for you. I love the hair oil to give shine, our KHO oil. Taffy is really great to set stuff in place. Um, and I actually should have used a little bit of Taffy on my model here. That would have helped me kind of piece it out or texture cream. I love to use these two interchangeably, but this one gives a little more volume. So for my braiding on my pink and purple girl, it would have actually been better if I would have used this on her. So, um, you know, learn, learn from me guys there. 
thermal deterrent spray is absolutely wonderful. If you have that fine client, I'm actually going to use it on her. If you have that really fine client that their hair does not want to stay, this is absolutely fabulous for making sure that hair stays through all humidity the whole day. Defrizz for all my defrizzing um, and preventing any atmospheric um, humidity from getting in. Lester Shine Spray, we're going to finish off with that. You've already saw air, pray, air paste, and then I will tell you why I like to use each of these. If I want an eight control with a um, kind of a more, a little bit more of a matte finish, I'll reach for design or dramatic FX. This is, I always joke and say that um, final effects is a Scorpio on a warpath. I don't know if any of you guys are into zodiac signs but when a scorpio on a warpath they mean business what she says is final when you spray this on this is my final finishing spray the hair does not it's not going to go anywhere so i love this for all my prom styles and then i love the lustrous finishing spray for a nine control that has a, a great shine and then i also I like to use brush through as a working spray too um because you brush through it and it's like it's still got hold but it's not exactly um you know it's not like a hairspray feel then uh, awesome dulce i appreciate that appreciate you gonna practice so real quick before i get off here i do just want to show you guys how i like to curl to create these kind of beautiful glamour waves so i like to take like a one inch iron like this Take my section. Can everyone see this? And what I like to do is I like to check it with my finger. Once it gets hot, I twirl and twist out and then let the ends. And then I'm going to, I'll let that cool. But when using this, what this does, you can also use this as a non aerosol hairspray. This is the most fabulous product for this fine, fine hair like, uh, or fine hair guest like my Miss Manny Quinn here. And then once this kind of cools, what I like to do then is take like a Mason Pearson, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, a Mason Pearson, I have like multiple ones, I do love them, um, and these are worth it. So this one is one of my favorite ones, the popular. So then I'll take, and the reason why I like to take this is, you see the hair still stays curled. Can everyone see that? It still stays curled, but it creates more of a, you know, less of a Shirley Temple kind of feel. And I'll show you on my pre-curled pre -curl girl here as well. So this is another one. That's that dragon braid technique. When you actually remember to use your texture paste, guys, I apologize. Um, and then you can take and see how it just creates more of that glamorous wave with a look like this. And then this is where you could also get the idea to take and um, do it in like a French. So I'll show you guys that there. So again, we went over today how to do our dragon braid with two different types of, you know, finished looks on there. And then also our four strands or four braids into a braided bun. So if you guys are inspired by this, please tag me when you guys post. I would love to see your guys' work.